O saving victim opening wide, the gate of heaven to man below, our foes press on from every side. Thine aid supply, thy strength bestow. All praise and thanks to thee ascend. Forevermore blessed one in three. O grant us life that shall not end. In our true native land with thee. Amen. Welcome to this Lenten service of Eucharistic adoration. Um, so as I said before, we're going to have a series of times of teaching and pause and reflection as we um, look at our passage today and also just to draw near um, in silence and in quietude to uh, this time of praying and meditating and sitting before the Blessed Sacrament. So um, I hope you'll use your uh, computer devices or your fast forward or your remote controls, however you're watching this, to pause as you need to pause. Um, as I said, this service today is gonna be about an hour. Um, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter and um, make it for what you would like it to be. Um, if you need more time with the Blessed Sacrament for any of the teachings, then take more time. Um, hit pause. Stay. Be present with Jesus. Um, if you're finished, move along, right? So um, we're going to do these teachings sort of within the scope of Lectio Divina, um, using that as a broad uh, aspect of the teachings as well. Lectio Divina literally means divine reading, and it's a process where you read, reflect, pray, respond, and then um, enter into contemplation or meditation and uh, allow God to speak to you. So it's a series of steps um, that bring you close to God's word without studying as much as listening to what the words are saying, what God is saying um, through the Holy Spirit to you. And so doing this uh, before the Blessed Sacrament is a great way to uh, allow the words of God to come to you and to permeate your soul. So we're just doing a very brief passage today um, and so I invite you to listen, but then I invite you to reread this passage as well, or to go back and listen to me read it again if you want. It's, this is from John chapter 12, verses 23 to 26. It's a very short chapter. This is after the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And so we're into this last week as Jesus is heading toward the cross. And indeed, Jesus says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. 
And so I'm going to read it again in just a minute. But I invite you, just as you're, as you're sitting there, to just to listen for key words, key phrases, key images that spark your own imagination. Um, things that maybe you want to know more about, that you want to dive in, that you want to ask God about. So you're, you're looking at, you're listening for, for things that just spark in you um, for this first time of silence. Jesus said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it. For eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor.
the second aspect of Lectio Divina after reading is reflecting. A lot of times as we read the reading again, we reflect um, sometimes just on a given word, sometimes on a broader meaning of the passage that, that really strikes us. So as we as we look at this passage again, just give a couple of, of things. Of course, um, you can judge for your own self, right? Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me the Father will honor. And so we have a variety of words that sort of jump out, images of the death of a seed that goes to ground or the Son of Man being glorified or those who wish to follow or those who are servants or those who love their life or those who lose their life. Right? All of these images these words, so maybe it's just grain, falls, dies, glorified. And in this way, you, you reflect and you just try to allow God to continue to speak to you. And one of the, one of the good ways of reflection um, in meditation is also just with with beads um, there's a variety of beads the, the traditional rosary bead and the anglican slash protestant prayer beads and then the orthodox prayer bead um, in many ways though though um, many will point out the differences in them as you as you decide to use them for ref reflection, um, offering different prayers as you as you travel around the beads, for meditation they they're they're, they're just good to keep you focused, moving, something to draw you, and, and in that way they're similar. It doesn't matter if you're using an Orthodox prayer bead that doesn't have any other, or the Anglican prayer bead that has less than the rosary or the rosary, if you're using them to guide you to reflect upon what's being said, a single word or a single image, glorified, 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 to keep your, to keep your focus on, on what God might be saying in you, through you, then, then these are, these are good, good means um, of ways to use them. They're also good to use just in their intended purpose also, um, you know, to, pr to pray through this whole, this whole thing. You can reflect by praying different prayers and just on um, each bead, pray uh, an image from this, from this scene or whatever scene you're, you're reflecting upon, right? You just use them, and draw deeper and nearer. So um, during this next time, I encourage you to, to pick out one of these words, one of these images, and sit with it. Try to keep it at the forefront of your mind and, and allow God to speak to you. If you have prayer beads of some sort, use them if it's helpful. Um, if not, just um, revel in the silence of being with God.
The third aspect of Lectio Divina um, is to respond, to reflect. Um, so you've had a chance to read, chance to meditate, and now we respond, reflect upon what this passage is saying to us. Um, one of the helpful ways to do this is to is to journal or to just to write things down. Some people love to journal because uh, they go back and they look at it later and they read it and, and remember what God is saying. Um, I like to journal primarily because it gets my mind to, to go blank a little bit and, and allows God to speak through me in different ways than than when I'm just praying. A lot of times when I'm silent, it's, it's hard work for me to be silent. Um, my mind might tend to wander. Um, but when when I journal, it, it frees my mind a little bit. And, and all of a sudden, uh, after writing for a little while, God begins to speak uh, on the page. And so it's very helpful for me that way. But um, so journaling's one way to reflect. Another is just through prayer. Again, you can use the beads as another another good way to pray. Um, another another positive of the beads is you just you just can't rush through them. Um, they they sort of cause you to pause and to take time. And so if that's helpful for you, do that as well. But this is this is an opportunity for you to to speak to God to reflect on what God is saying through this passage. Um, to ask questions, even uh, to to really struggle with the message that's here. You know, do I really have to uh, hate my life, right? Do I really uh, this world in order to keep it for eternal life? What does that mean that I have to hate my life? What does it mean that um, I w I need to lose my life? Um, you, you know, those are questions that it's that's okay to cry out to God with, right? The, the, this is truth um, as we struggle with our relationship with God, that, that we're invited to this deep relationship with Jesus, who is, who is to be glorified, which in John's gospel means crucified. Um, so he's, he's going to be glorified. He's going to be crucified uh, for us. And so... What does it mean for us to live into that, into that as well? Um, and how does that all work? Um, how do we bear much fruit? How do we go to the to the ground? Those types of things, right? And so, as we as we read this passage again, um, I encourage you to pick out those things that that you want to reflect upon, that you want to ask God about, that you want to jot down in a journal, or um, you know, just write. Where it, wherever it leads you, just reflect upon what ways that um, you might enter into what this passage is calling you to. How do you do these things anyway? How do you truly follow? What does it all mean? And so we're going to read this passage again, then I invite you to take some time to respond, to reflect, to pray. Jesus said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. And so I, I do invite you to sit with this passage, reflect. Don't, don't try to study too much, um, every little jot and tittle, but allow the words to, to permeate you and, and to reflect on those.
fourth aspect of Lectio Divina is then contemplation. And, and contemplation is, isn't quite the same as, as meditation. Contemplation is allowing God to, to rest with you, to be with you. This is like quality time with God and, and allow God to speak to you, through you, um, sit with you, right? This is a lot of times in prayer, we think of prayer as this active thing we have to do. Um, in many churches where one of the one of the key aspects of a relationship with God is your personal quiet time of prayer and reading scripture and having a prayer list and you know doing all these things for God. Oftentimes we never sit and allow God to speak to us. We don't get to receive God's love. We're always actively sort of doing something for God instead of receiving the love that God has for us. And this is what contemplation is. It's receiving God's grace, God's love. And so as we read this passage again, I invite you to sit and, and just allow God to speak, to receive God's love, to be present as you gaze at the Blessed Sacrament, receive the love and grace and joy of God who loves you deeply, who loves you enough to be glorified that you might have life. And so, and before I read the last passage, uh, because then I don't want to talk again, unlike I did last time, uh, it's, I, I do want to say that any of these parts of Lectio Divina are fine all by themselves too, right? When you come to Eucharistic adoration or when you come to a time of, of spiritual activity or practice, um, you can just read the scriptures, asking the Holy Spirit to, to uh, give, you, give you wisdom as you read them. You can just read, right? And sort of reflect a little bit. You can just enter into a time of, of reflection and prayer, either on a given word or a given theme or just being silent or praying with beads and, and allowing that time to be just a time of rest. You can just journal, reflect, respond, right? You can, you, you, you can spend the whole time um, journaling, looking, thinking, writing a little bit, reading what God has said and, and responding again, again and again. And you can just sit and be present and allow God's spirit to wash over you in contemplation. Any of these four things are, are good enough on their own but um, I hope it was helpful for me to put sort of uh, this into the, the components of what Lectio Divina is as well, um, which, you can, which you can come and, and do with any passage of scripture and take these four steps and, and allow God to work in and through you. So as we enter into our last time, our last reading, I invite you to receive um, the love and grace and glory of God through contemplation. Jesus said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor.
We continue with the litany of the Blessed Sacrament. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Jesus, Word of God incarnate, we adore you. Holy Jesus, Son of God and Mary, we adore you. Holy Jesus, whom the heavens cannot contain, we adore you. Holy Jesus, present on the altar, we adore you. Holy Jesus, adored by the heavenly hosts, we adore you. Holy Jesus, ready to hear our prayers, we adore you. Holy Jesus, veiling your glory, that we may draw near, we adore you. Holy Jesus, both priest and sacrifice, we adore you. Living bread, that whoever eats will live forever, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, manna in the wilderness, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, broken bread that feeds the multitude, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, bread that comes down from heaven, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, bread that gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, revealed in the breaking of the bread, evermore give us this bread. Holy Jesus, feeding us with your body and blood, evermore give us this bread. For measuring your grace and holiness by our understanding, Lord, deliver us. From doubts, distractions, and irreverence, Lord, deliver us. From unworthy and unfruitful receiving, Lord, deliver us. From hardness of heart and ingratitude, Lord, deliver us. From lack of loving our neighbors as ourselves, Lord, deliver us. Hear us, Lord, and grant that we may know your presence. Hear us, Lord, that we may acknowledge our dependence on you. Hear us, Lord, that we may seek to know and do your will. Hear us, Lord, that we may recognize every blessing you give us. Hear us, Lord, that we may come to you in repentance for our sins. Hear us, Lord, that we may approach this ineffable mystery with perfect love. Hear us, Lord, that by your Spirit we may be made ready to lead a new life. Hear us, Lord that we may walk in the way of your commandments. Hear us, Lord, that the wounded and despondent may find healing and hope. Hear us, Lord, that we may see your image in one another. Hear us, Lord, that in the days to come we may stand in your presence. Hear us, Lord. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Therefore we before him bending This great sacrament revere Types and shadows have their ending For the newer rite is here Faith our outward sense befriending makes our inward vision clear glory let us give and blessing 
to the Father and the Son, honor, thanks, and praise addressing, while eternal ages run, ever to his love confessing, who from both with both is one. Amen. Thou gavest them bread from heaven, containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray, O God, who in a wonderful sacrament hast left unto us a memorial of thy passion, grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may perceive within ourselves the fruits of thy redemption, who livest and reignest, world without end. Amen. Continue with the divine praises, repeating each line. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Blessed be Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Blessed be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. Blessed be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. Blessed be Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood. Blessed be Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood. Blessed be God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Blessed be God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Blessed be God in the Virgin Mary, mother of our God. Blessed be God in the Virgin Mary, mother of our God. Blessed be God in St. Joseph, guardian of the incarnate word. Blessed be God in St. Joseph, guardian of the incarnate word. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. We conclude with Psalm 117, beginning and ending with the antiphon. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament. But praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye peoples. 
For his merciful kindness is ever more and more toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament. 